Great to YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode around sensors and microcontrollers. These LiPo batteries are very useful but dangerous products, if we do not pay attention. If we overcharge them, they can get hot and explode. And, more important for low current applications, if you completely discharge these LiPo batteries and try to charge them again later, they can also catch fire. I did not really believe this when I read it. But recently, exactly this happened to me. Suddenly, a battery started to fume and was already extremely hot. Fortunately, I was around and was able to prevent the worst. I disconnected the battery, grabbed it with pincers and carried it outside the house. This is the reason for that video. I will show you a simple method to protect your existing 18650 LiPo batteries. Of course you can buy protected 18650 cells, but I already have a few non-protected ones laying around. And I want to use them in the future, but safely. What are the problems we have to solve today? The charging has to be interrupted if the cell voltage is above about 4.2 volts. The discharging has to be interrupted if the cell voltage is below about 2.5 volts. The maximum current has to be limited to a few amperes. And we want to have these protections built in, in the battery itself. Let's start with the first problem. A LiPo battery converts current into change of its chemical structure to store it for later usage. This process stops when its capacity is used. After that, unfortunately, the current flowing into the battery does not stop. What happens with the excess energy? As usual in physics, it is converted into heat and, if your charging current is high, the temperature of the cell increases. Dangerous. <laughs> Fortunately, this condition can be detected relatively easy, because the cell voltage of our LiPo batteries is about 4.2 volt when it is fully charged. So, we have to create a circuit which interrupts charging current if the voltage reaches 4.2 volts. Of course, the discharging must not be interrupted in this state, because we would like to use our fully charged battery. The next problem is related to the LiPo technology. All the technologies like nickel cadmium or, or nickel metal hydride were not as critical here. If you discharge a LiPo battery completely, the next charging process can be dangerous, because the chemical structure is changed in a non-reversible way. To prevent this, we have to interrupt the discharging because we reach such a low voltage. This is usually good, because our devices anyway would stop working at these low voltages, or even worse, become unstable. By the way, we also have to charge all our LiPos after a while, because they have very small self-discharging current and can reach this under voltage stage even if we do not use them. The third problem also has to do with the heat. LiPo batteries have a very low internal resistance which is very good because they can deliver a high current. This is used for example for the new electric cars where the engines need high power to accelerate fast or also in our quadcopters. If we discharge such a battery with a high current, it can get hot and as we know, this can be dangerous. So our protection circuit has to interrupt the current when it gets too high. Of course, we could build such a protection device ourselves. It would look like that. A first comparator compares the cell voltage and signals if it is above 4.2 volts. A second comparator signals if the cell voltage is below 2.5 volts. A third comparator has to compare the discharge current and report if it is too high. Then we need a circuitry to make sure these signals do not start to oscillate. One example of such an oscillation could happen like that. If you discharge a battery, its cell voltage reaches 2.5 volts. Then the over-discharge comparator would disconnect the load. If you disconnect the load, the cell voltage immediately increases to above 2.5 volt. And of course, the comparator would immediately switch the load on again. 
and the circle would continue over and over. Our additional circuitry has to prevent such things. The same happens if the overcurrent protector would interrupt. The current would stop and the protector would immediately switch it on again because the current now is below its threshold. With a devastating effect, because the battery would heat up fast. Also, this behavior has to be inhibited. And of course, because VCC can vary from 4.2 to 2.5 volt, we have to include a precise voltage reference. You see, this is not a simple task. Fortunately, we can buy a small chip with all these ingredients for a few cents. It is called DW01 and is widely used, for example, in these LiPo charger circuits. We connect it to our battery and get two output signals. OD for discharge control and OC for charge control. But we are not finished. This small chip cannot switch big currents. To switch currents we usually use MOSFET transistors. One to switch the charging on and off and the other to switch the discharging on and off. Of course they are connected in reverse direction and their so-called body diodes are part of the design. Body diodes are intrinsic to most MOSFETs and make that a MOSFET always is on in its reverse direction, as we see here. We have to connect two MOSFETs to our DW01, like that. The LiPo cell is connected here. At the end, this is the positive pole of our protected battery and this is the negative one, where we connect the load. How does this circuit work? The left MOSFET is on as long as the OD signal allows to discharge the battery and the current can flow from the cell to the load through the body diode of the right MOSFET. The same applies with the right MOSFET, which is responsible for the charging control. Also here we can buy a cheap chip which contains these two MOSFETs, already connected in the right order. It is called 8205. With these two chips, additional two resistors and one capacitor, we can build a whole protection circuit. In my video about solar chargers, I used two different versions of these small TP4056 LiPo charger modules. The difference of the two is exactly these two chips. So, cells connected to these chargers are protected. But as I said in the beginning, this is not the solution I was searching for. I wanted to have my 18650 LiPo batteries safe and usable in normal conditions. Just as the protected ones I bought. Fortunately, I discovered these small parts. They have the same diameter as a normal 18560 cell and contain the protection circuit from before. The only difference is that it has two 8205 chips in parallel. This makes it possible to increase the maximum discharge current to 6 ampere, not only 3, as with one chip. And the kits I purchased also contain a few other parts I will show you later. Let's quickly test one of the circuits and let's start with the overcharging protection. As soon as the cell voltage increases to about 4.3 volt, the charge current is switched off. Great! And if we try to discharge the battery below 2.5 volts, the discharging also is switched off and remains off. The third test is the overcurrent protection. If I increase the current, it is interrupted and stays interrupted until I remove the load and apply it again. Also great. This small device really does what we expect. Now the best. We can use the other parts of the kit and connect it to an unprotected battery. Because I do not want that the battery gets too thick, I remove its protection sleeve first. Now the whole outer surface is connected to the minus pole of the cell. To convert an unprotected into a protected battery, first we solder the two flat wires of the kit to the protector. I use a small piece of two-sided adhesive tape to fix the PCB to the table and apply some solder to the pins first.
pay attention that you keep a distance between your wires and these pins. Now you shorten the B- minus wire that you know which one is which and insert the protection PCB into this plastic part. Pay attention that you put the long wire through this opening. Now we solder the short wire to the negative of the battery and stick the protector into its place again using clear household tape. Next we have to solder the long wire to the positive pole of the battery. Here we have to pay a little attention. Because I took the protection sleeve away, I add now captain tape to isolate the positive wire from the negative case. Captain is a good isolator and is very heat resistant. This is not necessary if you leave the protection on. On the top of the battery the plus pole is quite close to the negative case. The kit also contains two sorts of isolation stickers. I also use clear tape to keep the positive wire in place and solder it to the positive pole. Make sure that you do not add too much solder. Usually this solder also helps to connect your batteries to flat surfaces in your battery holders. This is why most of my unprotected cells already needed a little solder here. Now the cell is protected and if we did everything right it should still work. As a last step you have to add a new protection sleeve. I use this clear one because like that the conversion is still visible. Just place it that there is about 3 mm on the top and use hot air to shrink it. Now I can use this battery in my torch. I just replace an unprotected one with our new one. It is quite obvious that this protected battery is longer than the unprotected one. To my knowledge, this is also the case if you buy ready-made protected cells. These batteries do not fit anymore in these battery holders. They still fit into the ones with the spring. If you want to use this type of connectors, you have to print your own holder, which is about 3 mm longer than this one. You can buy several kit variants. Some of the protector plates come flat and others curved. I think the curved ones are better because they take into account the sleeve. And for the positive pole you get two different pieces. All my batteries already have such a part, so this was not needed. At the end I want to test the overcurrent protection of the battery. I use a thin wire and two pliers because I do not want to burn my fingers. If I short circuit the unprotected battery, the wire starts to glow and melts. With the protected cell, nothing happens because the protection board interrupts the current immediately. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then like. Bye.